YouTube. Jay here with Homebrew Vapes. I'm going to show you guys how to make a diamond coil today. Uh, kind of my style of diamond coil, I guess. So, uh, here we go. Get down. I'll show you guys how to build this thing. To do this build, we're going to do some 24 gauge can thaw. And I have a ladybug <laughs> on my wire. Hold on one second. Come here, kiddo. Come on. Well, you gonna get up there or what? I don't know why, but for some reason these guys want to get right in the middle of what I'm doing. Come on. Climb on it. There you go. Alright, we'll set you up over there. You can chill out. <laughs> anyway. So, what we're going to do is going to be diamond coil. Five wraps per coil. Because it's four, basically four coils on one piece of canthal. So, we're just going to take a length. Just one roll around on this old spool and then I'm going to take a 332nd 2.5 millimeter screwdriver here and you want to leave a pretty nice long leg because for some reason on this kind of coil it likes to pull in as you're tightening it up because it is a little springy when you get towards the end. So we go one, two, and you want to keep this nice and tight. Three, four, five, and here's where we start our second one. Just a little tiny space. One, two, three, four, five, Next one. Next one. All right. Give it a nice little tightening there. Let's see if we can get that a little bit tighter. So we're going to use the pliers for this one because it's kind of kicked up over. There we go. And there's that springy, springiness. So there we go. So the way I like to start it, use a nice pair of tweezers. And I don't slide it all the way off the screwdriver at first. I just slide off the first section. And then we're just going to take our tweezers grab a hold of the first set of coils give her a 90 degree bend just like that and we'll get our second section of coil nice little pinch give her a nice bend and as I'm bending what I'm doing is I'm kind of pressing with my thumb here back onto the screwdriver makes it a little easier to bend those coils up especially with 24 gauge or even if you're doing 22 gauge second one and for our third one it's coming from behind here give it a nice little pinch grab this other section here and try it again tight bends all right so there's the start of it and the nice thing about using this thicker gauge canthal is you can kind of mold it 
a little easier than using like the 28 gauge and the, the smaller gauges and it will hold a lot. It's, it, it's a lot more pliable working it with the hands and it will kind of stay with that shape a little bit easier and it's a little easier also when you, where you go to fire it because with the 28 gauge what usually happens is these will start to separate whenever you're firing it up to pinch your coils and then you'll you know try to twist it and try to twist this in and it kind of moves all this stuff around so with the thicker gauge it's just a little bit easier to use and we're going to be shooting for I'm going to actually make a dual coil set up and we're going to be shooting for about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 ohms maybe 0.8 ohms so like I said I got 5 wraps 24 gauge canthal and there's our first coil I'm actually going to set this up on my Mutation X version 2, my new one that I just got in today. Also got the marquee in today. I've been vaping on this thing today. This thing, I love this thing so far. I mean, the finish on it, awesome. But we're not talking about that right now, so I am going to take a vape before I go. Some vapor for you. All right, the way we're going to set this up, with it being so close together, maybe we're just going to go same side. We don't have to skip screws, in other words, like you do on some coils. Let me try to get a little closer in here for you guys. There we go. And the other thing you got to do is whenever you're installing these, try to keep the leads as even as possible because this top, for some reason, always wants to bend in, especially whenever you go to um, tighten it down. So let's get these screws tightened down. Right about there will work. Now I'm not going to cut these leads off just yet, mostly because I'm not going to be using this coil making it for a friend. Let's fire up. And yeah, I know the diamond's not there, but we're going to get that right now. So pull this over. Well, these are still hot. Give her another fire here. Tuck that bottom in. And you want to make sure that, of course, these two are not touching. And also make sure that it's not touching your post back here. Getting there. Another pinch. Fire it up. We just go around and do each set of coils. Get them nice and tight. Man, I gotta invest in some ceramic tweezers. After a minute, these things get hot. So there's the diamond coil. I'll tighten that top one up a little bit more. There we go. Sitting at 1.2 ohms. So whenever I put the other one in there, it should knock it down about 0.6 ohms. Be right about perfect. So now we got this thing firing and all tight. I'll let those coils cool down for just a second. 
and I'm gonna get my cotton ready to go. So I'll move this off to the side. Let's get rid of the screwdriver. All right. So just regular organic cotton. And the thing is, you've got to keep it somewhat thin, but you want it uh, a little bit tight when it's going through the coil. Mostly because whenever you're trying to pull this through, you got to you know go through and then come back the other side, and it always wants to kind of stay thinner around the bottom. And one of the problems I've noticed whenever it comes to the wicking on this thing is um, you'll get hot spots. You will see the it, cotton starts to burn right in here, and the wick won't even be dry yet, and it'll start you'll start getting dry hits because this will start glowing red right in here. So you want it kind of tight going through here, and the problem is not the first set of wicks you put through there. The first ones aren't easy, or aren't too bad to put in. It's the second set whenever you're trying to get those through, trying to fight that other piece of cotton that's there because I used two pieces of cotton. So, that should be cooled down enough now. Man, this is hard to do on camera. <laughs> anyway, we'll tight, or, uh, get this twisted up nice and tight on the end. And I'm making it pretty small on the end because whenever we go, go through there, it'll be a little easier to grab. Let me zoom out here a little bit. Alright, so we're going to push it through the top here. Oops. A little bit going through, then I just take a piece of canthal I got sitting around. Push it right on through. And then with this piece here, give it a little twist as you're pulling it. Sliding through pretty good. So that's the first one. And I'll go ahead and trim this off a little bit. And leave it about that long on the top. Alright, that's the easy one. So now we're just going to kind of tie this back, tuck it out of the way as much as possible. Because we're going to try to go through right here with the second piece. So, got our other piece of cotton here. Try to pull it and thin it up just a little bit. And then give her a little twist. Get rid of the little fuzzies at the end. All right. So, second piece of cotton. We're going to go right through the top here. Kind of try to pull this other piece of cotton back as we're feeding this one through. And what I'm going to do with this one is I'm actually going to pull it through. Just because it's a little easier that way. For me anyway. And then give this another twist. And kind of poke it through the bottom side here. Grab that little end. And give her a pull. And try to keep this straight. There we go. <laughs> Alright, now we're going to try to pull a little more through. Just to kind of tighten up that cotton a little bit. go that's plenty all right we'll cut this one off down here at the bottom cut it off even with the top and there you go and the magic of movies Here's my other one I already made up. <laughs> and that one's going to get installed just on the other side like that. And you'll trim it up. 
tuck these down to the bottom of your juice well and you're good to go now these here usually I do a single coil and what I'll do is I'll just twist these together and I'll kind of fold them just like a little hairball on the top <laughs> that's what feeds down but with the dual coil you can kind of put them all together and you'll probably want to trim a little bit of this up you know to your liking or whatever and then uh, see how she vapes but that is how I build my diamond coils 24 gauge canthal five wraps a piece on each coil and I'm actually going to be sending this out to a member of the vapedom.com it's a vapors form which I don't know um, if you guys have heard of it or not but a lot of people go in there there's a lot of stuff going on um, great groups great group of people and anything and everything you want to know about vaping it's there um, people doing reviews people doing uh, you know juice lines and builds and just you know, a lot of new vapors you know so if you've got any wisdom definitely you know lend a hand throw your two cents in and uh, otherwise just a cool place to hang out um, and then of course like I said I'm making this for one of the members there see how they like it but that's why I'm not juicing it up and firing it up but you get the point so I'll take this one out and we'll go back up top yeah so that's how you do it diamond coils um I like them I mean I used to I uh, vaped on a single for a while and it's good flavor I mean it's a nice vape you know and it's an easy build I mean fairly easy um, once you kind of get the hang of it and your spacing and stuff but I mean it is a good build great flavor and a good vape so and it's, it's a low wattage vape too for the most part even on a 22 gauge I could vape it at you know 50 watts and be a nice flavorful vape and producing good clouds so um, that's not something you have to turn up mega high to enjoy um, but anyway now that we got that done something I want to talk about is um, casa.org um, something that I've really gotten into is you know with this vaping thing you know getting off the cigarettes and everything knowing that cigarettes were costing so much you know and it's different per state but uh, here where I live a carton was costing me about $35 for a carton which you know compared to like New York <laughs> is cheap or Chicago even um, but anyway whenever I went to vaping um, I was using just an iClear 30 tank on an MVP the first gen MVP and you know it was doing pretty good you know I enjoyed it it wasn't too bad you know and then um, the drippers came out you know started becoming pretty big and I started getting into that and seeing what some of these states are doing to um, these brick and mortars to the vapors you know uh, as far as trying to put taxes on things and ban um, certain things with them and just pretty much putting a, putting a hurt on the community you know if you want to continue doing what you do and enjoy it without having all the penalties of you know bans and taxes and all this stuff you've got to do something I mean nobody's gonna do it for you you know and I've written my state representatives you know about my concerns um, and they've you know replied back of course with usually a generic reply but at least it's out there and go into casa.org go in there sign up you know become active because the only person who is gonna help this community is you you know the next guy you know who's thinking oh somebody else will do it all oh, you know there's plenty of people out there there's not there's not very many of us you know it's it's something still somewhat new you know so if you don't want to see things changing for the worse you've got to be the person to step up and do something so yeah constantly work um, also the vapedom.com awesome site 
you know, great group of people there. Um, there's tons of groups. There's tons of um, just knowledgeable people and also new vapors that are coming in and getting tons of information, advice, you know, and things like that from the veteran vapors that have been out, you know, doing, doing it for a while. Um, and just very positive group, you know. There's not a lot of, you know, rants and raves and drama and all that stuff, you know, that you see in some other places as far as I've seen so far. You know, it's been a very positive, um, just upbeat kind of place to go. So, I mean, check it out, thevapor.com. Lots of people there. Um, also, shout outs. Mike Vapes, you shouted me out. Shout out back to you, sir. And just for you, let me get a hit of that shit. Hmm. And that's on my marquee. Badass. Badass dripper. Love that thing. And uh, I just got it today, so I'm not going to go into big details about it, except to say that, yes, it's expensive, but damn. <laughs> and I'm not a big advocate as far as, you know, clones and originals and all this stuff. Um, as far as I'm concerned... Not everybody's made out of money. If it helps you get off the stinkies, by all means, do it. You know, um, my personal story as far as that goes, ever since I quit smoking, God, I feel better. I mean, just tons better. Um, I got two small kids. You know, they want to run, run around with Dad. They can do that, and I can keep up with them now, for the most part. <laughs> I had back surgery a few months, uh, actually, April <laughs> of uh, 2014, so... Couldn't run that great for a while, but getting better. Anyway, um, also, you know, the Vapor Chronicles, check out Brian, man. That guy, very straightforward, straight shooter, love watching him. Um, and the products that he's, you know, coming out with and reviewing. Good stuff. I mean, and it's good, straightforward stuff. And the nice thing, the thing that I like about them is, you know, these are guys that are going out there for the most part, and they're not getting everything handed to them. You know, and don't get me wrong, I mean, <laughs> if they can, by all means do it. I mean, I wish somebody would send me something. But, you know, I uh, I buy my own stuff. And I think if, you know, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure Mike and Brian both purchased their equipment. Actually, I think Brian does get a few things. Um, don't quote me on that. But I think he does get some products to review from these companies, which, awesome. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, Definitely check those guys out, the Vapor Chronicles on YouTube, Mike Vapes on YouTube. And then uh, definitely if you like my uh, videos, subscribe down here at the bottom. And like I said, check out casa.org, thevapedom.com. And uh, I've got a group on our homebrewed vapes. <clears throat> Other than that, I think that's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed the build and definitely give it a shot because, I mean, it's a good vape, you know, and it's something that uh, as small as a wick is, it actually does hold a, a fair amount of juice, especially doing it on like that 330 second. You know, it's not like quite a nano coil, so, you know, you can fit a little bit more wick in there, so you're not dropping, you know, every three pulls. You know, on that one there, if I remember right, I could get um, anywhere between 10 and 15 pulls, you know, on about 8 to 10 drops. So, pretty good. You know, not too bad. Um, what I got going on in here is just a simple, you know, 5 rep, 24 gauge, just standard, you know, micro coils. Threw some wick in there and she vaping. Oh god, she's awesome. Love that thing. And everything I've heard about this thing as far as flavor, spot on. Awesome. Um, but that Delta 2 I got also puts out awesome flavor and actually I would have to say the Delta 2 puts out better flavor than this but it's all depending on the build you've got going on and like I said I just got this thing today so I'm gonna try out a few different builds um, probably put a chimney in there or something you know maybe a single coil turn the watts down a little bit try to get a little bit more flavor out of it but yeah definitely not gonna knock it for the flavor I just got it so but just saying so far from what I've noticed my Delta 2 uh, flavor wise a lot better but uh, definitely nice Addy and then 
Got my new Mutation X in today, in the black. And, I mean, everything that can be said, I think, about this thing has been said by everybody. But definitely an awesome Addy, especially for the price. You know, well built, nice and tight. And then the uh, whiteboard drip tip that comes with it. Didn't like it at first, just because it was kind of weird, you know, getting used to that. Um, but I did get an adapter to put in there to put your regular 510 drip tips in. <clears throat> Works really well, but I kind of got used to that white war and kind of liking it. But um, definitely, probably going to vape on this thing for another, oh, week or two. And I might come back and do a little review on it or something. And then I know I said that I was going to do a review on the Segelli 150 watt box mod. And that is coming. I'll probably have that up next week, so check it out. Um, other than that, I think that's all I got for you guys. So, uh, like I said, get active. Check these places out. You know, drop in and say hey to somebody. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So, guys, take it easy, and thanks for watching. And definitely, you know, I've, <laughs> I think I've got six subscribers. Thanks to you six subscribers. <laughs> But definitely, uh, hopefully I'll be getting some more in here. So I'll check you guys later.